Hello and welcome to today's video, my uh, weekly video vlog, I guess you call it, which I tend to record when I'm driving up to Cambridge on a Sunday. So thank you guys for joining me. It's a fantastic day outside, so I'm all cheery and happy. Um, and yeah, in this kind of vlog, I talk about what I've been doing this week, just talking about all kinds of things related to Amazon FBA, related to business, related to how I've been doing and I guess business life, etc. So yeah, if that kind of stuff interests you, then thanks for joining and I hope you look forward to the episode. So this week's been super busy. I've been doing quite a lot of YouTube and obviously Amazon business, but we'll start off with the YouTube because that's where we are now. And yeah, I'm, I've done a couple of fantastic, two or three fantastic videos this week. I've really been trying to up my YouTube game and hopefully this is not too loud. And by the way, I'm doing a, uh, a dual camera uh, sort of uh, setup here. So I've got one sort of that direction, one that direction, and hopefully I can then cut between them, make the video more interesting, even though it's a driving vlog. But yeah, I did a fantastic uh, sort of interview with a guy called Adam today, and I'll link that video up here. Um, and Adam's a, a, a six-figure Amazon seller, and it's, it was a great interview just talking to him about how his journey on Amazon and how he got started. Um, he was a tradesman, a bricklayer, and that was his, his job, and he's been doing that for many, many years. And about a year and a half ago or so, he got into Amazon and... Now he's a six-figure Amazon seller. So in a year and a half, he managed to basically be able to quit his job, get into Amazon full-time, doing OA, RA, and PL. So that's online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, and private label. And he's absolutely crushing it. And on many days, he makes more money than I do. And I'm sure he'll surpass me at some point. But yeah, guys, that is a really good video. If you're thinking of getting into Amazon at all, like go and watch that video after this video because it's so good. But yeah, um, so that was a really good interview, and that is part of my new podcast series. I'm going to release this at, at, release these as actual podcasts on you know all the podcast sites, and that is called Amazon Moguls. And in that, I'm going to be interviewing uh, loads of people who do Amazon as a bit you know as their full time job or part time job or whatever, and just document their journey. And hopefully, it'll give people information for when they want to start Amazon it will give them inspiration um, and yeah hopefully just you know inspire people to start their own businesses and it's just also very interesting to hear people's stories I think anyway so I love talking about business and things like that so for me it is very interesting so that was just a great video I filmed and another one I did I did a live Q&A on Monday with people in my discord group and if you want to come and join my free discord group guys link in the description you can come and ask me questions talk to the community um, it's, it's a great community it's, it's building up slowly but it's a really good community a small tight-knit community right now but yeah I did a live Q&A on Monday and I, you know, that was for an hour and I was a little bit worried I wasn't gonna have enough sort of questions and things to cover but honestly it went on for the full hour and there were loads of great questions from all the members asking various questions about Amazon and things like that. And it was such a good series that I've decided I'm going to do this every sort of week or so. So next one I think is scheduled for tomorrow, Monday, whatever it is. Um, I'm looking at my watch, Monday the 25th. Um, although I might be playing tennis, so maybe I'll push it to Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, that's a really good... So if you want to get into Amazon, and or if you're an existing Amazon seller and you want to just ask me some questions without paying a coaching fee you know you can come onto that live chat live sort of um video i do it on youtube and um it's normally 8 p.m on a monday like i said I might move it to tuesday but we'll probably stick, keep that one at 8 p.m for, for this monday and you can come and ask me questions and i'll answer them to my best ability and say if you're new you can come and ask me questions about starting etc if you're an existing seller you want to grow to the levels i get i'm i am and you can um, ask me questions about that as well. So I've got lots to say on it. I've been living and breathing Amazon for two years now nearly. So, you know, day in, day out. So I've picked up some knowledge along the way. Um, but yeah, that was a great one as well. So I'll be doing another one of those. And if it feels like they're getting a little bit stale, then maybe I'll push them to every two weeks. But right now I'm happy to do them weekly. So just trying to give back to everyone. So yeah, from a YouTube point of view, that is what I've been doing. And then I put out a, a great video about, I think it was the Buy Box this week. 
So it's hard to keep track these days. And my goal from YouTube now is, you know, my ultimate goal, as I've probably mentioned before, 100K subscribers. It's going to take a long while to get there, but you know. Um, but talking about 100K subscribers, shout out to Nikos. I'll put a link in the description to him. He's not got 100K subscribers, but he's well on his way. His channel is sort of blowing up. He's doubled his subscriber base in one month. So gone from about 4,000 subs or so to 6,000 something, no, 7,000, I think. So nearly doubled it in a month. So, you know, he puts out some great content about private label and things like that. So, you know, worth going and checking out his channel as well. Link in description. Give him a shout out. But yeah, I do a week, sorry, a, a quarterly, not quarterly, God, I can't talk today. I do a podcast with him or sort of a video podcast interview thing every two weeks on his channel. So that's worth checking out as well. Um, putting out, just trying to put out loads of content there. Been really trying to up my YouTube game. I've invested in loads of equipment. You know, I'm going for this sort of dual uh, camera thing in the car now. And, you know, I'll be setting up sort of, you know, more equipment and stuff in my sort of filming studio at home. And, but also as well, just trying to put out, obviously, equipment's easy to buy and stuff, but just trying to also put out better content as well. So I've been doing a lot of research on how to actually improve my YouTube videos from like an editing point of view, from a scripting point of view, from a sort of pacing the, the content and how I talk about things. You know, it's actually quite complicated, just like anything, you know. It seems simple or whatever, but then you get into it and it turns out to be way more complicated than you think. But that's something I've been enjoying learning about. You know, I always say you should always be learning. So, you know, um, I spent the past two years doing Amazon, got myself to sort of 10K months, although we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, now I'm, I'm learning, you know, enjoying the YouTube journey while also doing Amazon as well. <coughs> so probably onto the Amazon stuff, that's probably you're more interested in. Um, Oh, I'm just watching a guy doing a dangerous overtake. Um, so yeah, going back to the Amazon stuff, which is the stuff you're probably more interested in. So this month I'm on around seven and a half thousand profits so far. I may not hit ten thousand this month, which is going to be a real shame. It's going to be really touch and go. Um, but it's totally my fault. I've been kind of letting up a little bit on the sourcing, which is not ideal. Go for an overtake. So, from an Amazon point of view, guys, um, you know, I like to try and hit, you know, 10,000 every month now, but I may not be able to do it this month. I have, I'm on about 7,500 so far, and it's going to be real touch and go if I'm going to hit 10,000. And it's been totally my fault. I've been slightly eating up on Amazon a little bit and because I've been doing the YouTube stuff and I'm going to be suffering because of it. So I let myself kind of run out of stock a little bit on some of my replens and I'm going to have to make sure I order more of those when they come back in stock. So that is the first thing. Um, I've also been sort of lacking on the sourcing a little bit as well. I've not been sort of researching new products for a little while. So that is something as well, which has essentially caused me to suffer a little bit. Now, obviously, I'm still doing very well. I'm on seven and a half thousand this month. Um, we've still got, you know, six, seven days left, however days in March. Um, so there's a good chance I could still make it, but it's going to be really touch and go based on, I think my estimate's basically about nine thousand, nine and a half. Depends if I have a good day or a bad day. So... Yeah, that's um, a bit of a shame, but I, you know, I like to sort of, at this point, get to 10,000 every month. But what are you going to do? So I had a interesting chat with a, a guy or a gal yesterday in the Discord group, in my free Discord group. And they were asking, you know, how... They were just talking about their Amazon journey a little bit. They're just starting out. They've joined a Discord group, um, one called Aftermarket Arbitrage. If you want to join that group, there's a link in the description. Um, and AMA is a great group, by the way. Um, it's really good, I think, for doing online arbitrage or OA. Um, it's got some great Amazon to Amazon stuff in there. But this person was saying they're only starting with about £750. And that's a really tough amount to start Amazon with. You know, it's very difficult to start, you know, while you can do that, it's very difficult to scale that kind of 
a business up from that amount of money. Now I know understands not I understand everyone's not got a huge amount of money, that's fine. You know, start out with what you start out with and then ideally just put more money in over time just to try and grow your capital. So obviously this is a quite a capital intensive business. But yeah, this person was doing, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name now, um, was doing online arbitrage. And do you know what I think, and I'm going to do a whole series of videos on this, by the way. I'm going to do a, vi a video series on how to start Amazon with 1,000 or less, how to start Amazon with, say, 1,000 to, I don't know, two and a half, and then probably, I don't, know, I don't want to make too many of them, but the thing is, you know, then two and a half to five, maybe. It's difficult to know, really. I don't want to do too many of these videos because you end up doing like, oh, well, you're going to do t every two and a half thousand and probably not. But the point I'm trying to make here that is, no matter, depending on how much you're starting with, your kind of strategy should be different for Amazon. So I need to think about exactly how I'm going to sort of uh, do these videos and sort of what tiers I'm going to do um, in terms of cap starting capital. Um, but essentially what I was recommending for this person was to, and as much as I think AMA is a great group, by the way, it really is. I actually thought they should leave AMA and join a group called Mental Picks. And the reason I thought they should join this group is because Mental Picks is mainly focused on what's called retail arbitrage. And that's where you're going into the shops, you know, for those of you that don't know, like Tesco's, Waitrose, whatever, you know, and if any kind of retail shop and you're buying items for resale from there. And the reason I recommend this, uh, firstly, M Mental Picks is because they're really focused on RA. They're the top group for doing retail arbitrage and they have loads of good leads on there. So that is the, the first reason, is to focus on retail arbitrage. And the reason mainly, the whole reason behind that is because you can get higher ROIs. So if you're starting with 750 pounds, and you're doing, let's say you're doing online, I'm just gonna round up to a thousand, so it's easier for me to, you know, um, do it in my head as I'm driving, the calculations. So, you know, let's say, let's say it was a thousand pounds, okay? Um, now, if you're only doing um, online arbitrage, you know, you're ideally looking at the best case scenario, you're looking for 30% ROI on that thousand pounds, and it might take you a couple of months to churn that over. So, you know, let's say it takes two months to churn your entire inventory. You're only going to be making, and I say only, it's still good, but you're only going to be making 300 pounds, okay, um, on your thousand, as long as everything goes swimmingly. Okay, so which is fine, no problem. But for, if you want to grow fast and they get to the point where you're making serious money, either you put more money into the business, which in this case obviously is not available, and for most people isn't available, or you need to up your return on investments. Um, so the other thing is, you, well, you can do is you can churn your stock quicker. So there's kind of three strategies to grow faster. And but for this person here being new. I think doing retail arbitrage is going to be better because with retail arbitrage, you're not looking at 30% ROIs, you're looking for 50% plus, you know, and you know, sometimes you're finding 100, 150% ROI items. So that is why I think it's really important to say start off when you've got limited funds doing retail arbitrage because you can grow so much faster. So let's say you go into a store, let's say we're on the bottom end here, we're going, we're finding 50% ROI items. That means every, say, two months, you're going to be making £500. And, okay, it doesn't seem like a huge difference, but this thing, this kind of accumulates over time. And the more you can make earlier on, the easier it is going to be to grow your capital. And the other good thing as well with, um, you know, online arbitrage is you can churn your stock a little bit quicker. Let's say we order online from an online store, okay? It might take two or three days to arrive. Let's say three days, okay? It takes you a day to prep it, send it in goes into Amazon, you know, but essentially you've got that sort of three day lag or four day lag before you can send, from when you ordered it to when you sent it in. With retail arbitrage, you literally go into the store, you buy the item, you've got it in hand right then. You can list it on Amazon, like in the store if you wanted using your mobile phone. And in theory, you could sell it if it was a very popular item and the price was good or whatever, you could sell it immediately. Um, so you could immediately profit. And I think, although I need, I'm not sure, because I don't do much FBM or, you know, stuff like that, but, um, and by the way, I'm talking about doing sort of FBM here. You can still do FBA, but um, you, in theory, you could do FBM. 
but yeah, with FBM, I think you get paid out a bit quicker as well. I'm not 100% sure, but um, cause I very rarely do FBM. I don't look at payout times. doesn't really affect me. But yeah, so that, anyway, just basically it cuts down the lead times on, you know, getting the items and packing it and stuff. So yeah, that's what I recommend, basically, if you've got limited funds. You need to get your money working for you faster and you need to be making it work harder. So that means churning stock quicker means getting those better ROIs. So that's why I really recommend for that person and anyone who's starting with less than maybe two and a half thousand pounds to focus on retail arbitrage to begin with. Really important there. Now, if you can't get out and about, you know, for any reason or you don't, you just don't want to go to the stores and do that kind of thing, you know, I understand, then you can do online arbitrage. There's no problem with doing that. It's just going to take longer to grow, you know. So it's still a viable option, but if you want to maximize your growth, do retail arbitrage so and that's i'd say anywhere between zero to two and a half thousand beyond that i then start phasing in some online arbitrage leads but you know even up to maybe five thousand you could argue retail arbitrage and there are people out there adam's a great example he does a lot of retail arbitrage so you know um and, and the, the, Thomas, who owns Mental Picks, is a huge retail arbitrage guy. You can scale retail arbitrage to really high amounts. So, you know, that's something you can carry on doing as your business model. Um, it's not a bad business model, actually, to be honest. There probably is a ceiling, but the ceiling probably is multi six figures a year. So, you know. But yeah, so that was an interesting sort of chat with that person anyway. And, there were, you know, it's... Yeah, the reason it's so tricky as well is because, you know, this person's starting with £750. You know, with you know, you're know, you going to have to get some software and stuff. Like, you have to join Mental Picks. Right now, that's £79. You know, it's expensive, but the amount of value you're getting from that group is just insane. But obviously, you know, um, you can only make so much use of that value when you've only got £750. And if you're paying you know, out £79, that's essentially 10% of your capital every month in a group so i get it it's a little bit difficult the only way thing i can suggest there is just try and put as much money in to the business as possible um using more hand gestures today for some reason um yeah put some more money into the business as you're going if you can and if you can try and sort of pay that uh, subscription off um you know not with your own money just keep it in the business but let's say you're paying £79 out on a subscription for, say, Mental Picks, for example. And if you want to join that, by the way, link in the description, um, is then to then give the company a director's loan of another £79 if you can afford to do so. And that way uh, you can pay yourself back in the future. And that way you can try and keep the capital in the business. So, but yeah, it's tricky because you kind of need a group, I think, to be honest. You, it's very difficult to do without a group. And um, it can be done, but it's extraordinarily difficult take way longer so yeah it's very difficult um yeah if you're paying out 79 pounds as i was saying before you obviously need something like seller ramp as well you probably need you, know, you do need keeper as well so you've got two or three softwares that you're paying for before you know it you're paying 100 150 pounds in subscriptions every month for all the different softwares you need and you know these are kind of the bare minimums you need so it's very difficult to start this business without a thousand you know without a thousand pounds i'd say minimum um, becomes very difficult. So anyone looking to start Amazon with less than a thousand pounds, it can be done, guys. It hundred percent can be done, but it's going to be tougher. So you know. Anyway, talked about that quite a bit, but it's kind of an interesting topic. There will probably, you know, there might be some young people out there who are looking to get into Amazon, save you money, do the research. You can still do it. Um, just be very selective on what you buy and let your business grow. And just like with any business, this thing takes time. You can't expect to make loads of money right off the bat. Unless you can come in with like £100,000 and, you know, have some amazing leads off the bat, which you can do with some groups, by the way. Um, you know, it's very difficult to make, a, a say, a living off this business. So, you know, um, if you did want, let's say you did want to come into this business, which is kind of, you know, and make a, a full-time living almost immediately, I would say you'd probably need about £50,000, maybe. It's difficult to say. Um, join two or three different groups and just buy the leads that they recommend that ping like the Amazon to Amazon stuff do the retail arbitrage do the, do the online arbitrage and I think you know with £50,000 you could probably make 
you know, with, with and don't forget you've got limited experience here. You could make two thousand pound a month, I'd say, from that. Um, and then as you learn more and get better at, at Amazon, you'd make more money. You know, if I started with fifty thousand pounds now, I'd obviously make more than you would. Um, you know, I'd probably be able to turn that into, you know, five to ten thousand a month. As a beginner, you probably only make two thousand a month just because you've got more to learn. You know, so it's interesting. And I'm sure there's people more experienced than me out there who could turn that 50,000 into way more every month as well. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I do feel like I'm very knowledgeable on Amazon, but I'm not like, a, you know, there's other people out there who know more than I do. And incidentally, by the way, if you do have 50,000 pounds or 20,000, 30,000, you're getting into the business, the quickest way to learn, hire a coach. So I charge 100 pounds an hour. It's a no brainer. We can get you, get you started and going super quickly. Um, invest in two, three, four hours of coaching, uh, get a couple of Discord groups going, you're literally going to be making a full-time living very quickly. So which is, what business can you do that with, by the way, apart from Amazon? You know, kind of interesting. So, yeah, um, not many that I know of, <laughs> let's put it like that, where you could almost make a full-time living within months. So we've just had the, um, the Amazon spring sale that's been on. There's been some uh, pretty good pings overall. Wasn't the best uh, event, but not too bad. And I know some people spent quite a lot of money on the pings. I actually let off a little bit on the Amazon to Amazon stuff with the spring sale, which is a mistake. You know, I just didn't, wasn't as focused on it as I should have been. And I've definitely missed out on probably a few thousand quid worth of profit, which is a shame, but there we go. You can't do everything. But yeah, one of the things you can do when you're doing Amazon to Amazon is, you know, you're always monitoring for deals, which is fine. Um, but yeah, when these big sales come on, like spring sales, prime sale, you know, that's the big one. Um, you know, that's when you can make some serious money. You can make five, 10,000 from one event, provided there's some good deals and you get, you know, get the right ones. So, you know, that's an interesting thing that happens with Amazon to Amazon. But you know, other than that sale, though, Amazon to Amazon's been a bit uh, quiet this year so far. And this is a good sort of reason to be um, adaptable in your Amazon business. You can't just rely always on one strategy. You know, when I started out in Amazon, I was just primarily focused on Amazon to Amazon. That's all I did was buy stuff on Amazon from one price, you know, on deal, and sell it back on Amazon. That is all I did. <coughs> And, you know, um, that worked really well for a while, but there's a kind of a limit to how much you can make with that. And you're also kind of reliant on, you know, deals coming along. If they don't come along, then you're a bit stuffed, I guess. So it's always good to be adaptable, have a two or three different strategies in mind. You know, have a good solid OA strategy where you're buying from the stores. You can continue to do Amazon to Amazon and you know um just be adaptable basically i think one thing you'll find is that no one single strategy works all the time with amazon you do need to be willing to change and be adaptable um over the years as uh you know things come and go strategies come and go new opportunities come along and old ones fade away so that's kind of an interesting thing to talk about as well so in my Discord group, I put out a channel with video requests. And by the way, if you've got a specific video you want me to do, come in, put that request in there. But yeah, we've got about 20 or 30 video ideas, which I'm probably going to get through at some point. There were some good recommendations from people in there. One guy wanted to see uh, the day in the life of a mogul. Um, okay, yeah, I can do that. Day in the life of me. Um, you know, my, my life isn't that exciting on a day-to-day -day basis, but yes, I can do that, no problem. Uh, someone else asked for a video, I think it was like the top five biggest mistakes I've made and the top five um, like successes I guess I've had. It's kind of an interesting one. So I've definitely made some big mistakes in Amazon. Um, and, and by the way, this is kind of interesting as well, actually. The more money you start with, obviously that's great. But obviously the bigger your mistakes are going to be when you buy the wrong item so you know it's a kind of interesting thing um like yeah the worst one for me i mentioned before triton shower holders you know they absolutely tanked they're throwing them down the tip at the end of the day i was uh, losing you know i think i bought 200 of these shower holder things and the price just tanked i didn't read the keep charts correctly 
I was, I was losing five pound an item or something crazy like that when I was selling them, and then my return rates were super high because Amazon actually sent me the wrong item, and then they actually wouldn't take the re take them back or refund me because I left it too late. I didn't realise that they were the wrong item they sent me. It was a different. It was still a shower holder, but you know it was a different type anyway. So in the end, I took those down the tip, took like a thousand pound loss, you know. But what are you going to do? So that was my biggest mistake. But yeah, I'll have a good think about what my sort of top five biggest mistakes have been and my top five biggest successes. Um, generally, my successes come from being sort of bold and brave when it comes to buying items, really understanding the keeper charts, you know, looking at the products, doing test buys where I could, although I'm not a big fan of test buys, but in some cases it works. And yeah, um, knowing your category, knowing your products, like, okay, I'll tell you an example of a great one. I bought a, a cream from a retailer. It was an expensive cream that you know retailed on Amazon for about sixty pounds, and the retailer was selling it um, cheap because it was um, out of date. And I'd so, I'd bought some, I think, without realizing it was out of date, and so like ten units, for example, sold them pretty quickly, and then um, I was like hang on, these don't actually have an expiry date on them. So I thought this is very weird that they'd say they're out of date. It was one of these products, so if you get into, you know, because it's a cosmetics product, sometimes cosmetics products have expiry dates on them, but sometimes they just have like a 12M, and all that means basically, as far as I'm aware anyway, is that, you know, once you open it, it's got 12 months of life from opening. So with this product, I end up clearing the entire website it cost me about five grand, I think, in product. And actually, I probably could have bought a bit more as well, because I think I did one order for like 100 units, and then saw how they went, and then bought more and cleared the site. But I think I probably missed out on maybe 50 to 100 units there. And that was very profitable, to be honest, because I was the only one that had that product for the most part. Um, it wasn't out of date. I had one return where they said it was out of date, and that was it. And they. I think because you could look at the manufacturing date, and to be fair, the manufacturing date was quite far in the past, like a few years, but no one else complained about that stuff, and you know it worked out great. So sometimes you've got to be a little bit bold, I guess, in your, in your purchases, but it's tricky. You don't want to get stuck with crappy inventory, you know, spending a fortune. So, But you can always return things, I guess. It can just be a pain if you're buying 100 items from a retailer and returning them. I'm not a fan of doing that whatsoever. Um, just because you know you can probably burn your relationship with that that website, or you know it just it just becomes a hassle. But you can do it still. You know, in the UK, you get the fourteen day return policy. But yeah, so you know that's one of my better successes as well. You know, my, another great one. We're talking about single products here, I guess. Um, Sanctuary Spa gift set at Christmas, a ping the mental picks to put out. You know, made several thousand pounds off that one product. Could have made more if it hadn't caught COVID. Talked about that before. But yeah, um, and just being sort of active in these groups as well. I mean, I'll give out a shout out to another group, which I do promote below. If you want to join, it's called Resale Concierge. Um, and um, so those are sort of the three groups I recommend. Aftermarket Arbitrage, Resale Concierge, and um, uh, Mental Picks each have their strengths and weaknesses and in that one someone posted like a drone deal so it wasn't actually the admins or anything that posted it it was just a member find and this is why it's sometimes good to be in these groups you can see the members share deals and it was for a DJI drone from Argos and they um, it was meant to be selling for 828 but they got mispriced to 228 and I was able to get three of those I believe maybe four no, I think four, actually. I've got four. Yeah, so uh, two from one store, then one from one store, one from one store. And, you know, my big, I actually made a mistake with that. I should have gone way harder. But I was like, oh, I, don't want to, I was scared. I don't want to get cancelled. But honestly, guys, when you see great deals like this, just go as hard as you can, as deep as you can on them. Um, you know, if they're going to cancel, they're going to cancel, whether you've done one or 100, whatever, you know. So um, well, that's not quite true, but you know what I mean. So go deep on them and just go hardcore. So they're a good sort of, I don't know, £300 profit each, whatever. So that's a £1,200 day. Um, apart from when I got a return from the guy who crashed one. So that sucked. 
but you know I got it so cheap I was able to break even on it anyway by selling it all even the broken bits on on uh, eBay so yeah uh, it's interesting I have a good think about my successes and failures and stuff what I, you know things I see people mistakes I see people making so I have just hired with a few friends of mine a new virtual assistant we actually had one um, we hired maybe three weeks ago and in the week you know I put in a lot of work even even just in the first week training her and you know I was doing daily meetings with her and by the way some, yeah, someone actually asked me you know are VAs all they're cracked up to be the answer is yes yes and no um, you have to you have to spend a lot of time training them. If you don't know how to source yourself, then how are you going to train someone? So you need to learn how to do your business yourself, systematize it, what you're doing, and then teach that on someone else. Anyway, we hired um, you know this uh, new virtual assistant, and she seemed okay in the first week. You know, not too bad. Uh, a few crummy deals here and there, but you know, it takes a while for a virtual assistant to learn. You know, in the first month, they're probably going to break even for you, hopefully. And then the second month, hopefully, they'll make you a bit of profit. Third month, they'll start coming into their own. So it takes a while to build up. But, yeah, in, in the end, I actually had to fire her because I just didn't think she was being truthful to us. Um, and there was a way I was able to find that out from her search history on Selleramp. You know, it just happened that at the very first product she searched every single day, uh, or the first few products she searched, were basically the leads she was giving us almost as if someone had given her the leads and then she was basically just going onto those products right away just to make sure that they were like profitable based on our criteria and then submitting them to us and then the rest of the day while she was doing the work I could see she was searching we had got very few leads from actually her searching so um, you know in the end I fired her I did actually regret a little bit and I, like I say I'm not uh, perfect I do make mistakes I should have given her a chance to explain um, before firing her but I was fairly angry you know um, but yeah in the end I did actually give afterwards I said do you want to just explain yourself and she was like oh you know I had some leads from the from when she was trained and because I got her through fast track FBA they do virtual assistants if you want to get a virtual assistant use link I'll put a link below you know a lot of links below, basically. Um, so yeah, we you know we hired her through there. They train them up, then they give them to you. They train them you know fair, in a fairly basic way, to be quite honest with you. But they do find them for you. Get all the contracts set up and stuff. So you know anyway, um, you know she said, oh yeah, I got some deals from Fast Track, and you know I had them, and I, I sort of fed them to you over the week. You know the point is, it was very, she was still, even though that's maybe not as bad as sharing leads from other people and you know supplying them to us. Because that's what I think a lot of these virtual assistants do is they get together, you know, and they share the leads. So um, either, the, you know, a group of them get together and they share leads between each other just so they don't have to do as much work or they've always got some sort of leads. Um, or they just work for multiple people and, you know, those leads get so you're just there and they working three, four jobs and, um, you know, trying to get more money, obviously. And then obviously the leads as well get shared. Um, and yeah, obviously it was very dishonest of her to do that. And I think it's because uh, Fast Track had this kind of like four deal minimum per day. It's like, oh, you need to find four deals, you know. And basically every day apart from one, it was always four deals. So she was only meeting the requirements. And then what I suspect she was doing was she was sort of, if she found any more deals, she was just saving them for the next day. And, you know, you know there's a lesson learned there for next time that, you know, that we've got a new VA starting on April 1st. And, you know, I'll be saying to him, do not save deals. I don't give a, sh you know, excuse my language, I don't give a crap about deals per day. That means nothing to me. You know, we want deals that are profitable. If you find me one good deal a week that's really profitable and pays your week's salary plus more, I'm happy, basically. Although I'd rather have one solid deal than, like, 20 crummy ones so you know that's something a, a tip for you when you get a virtual assistant set your targets based on not being um like deals per day or deals per week or whatever it's got to be based on and what i think it's more difficult to track but profitability over time so and that's how you should base your bonus structure as well with uh, virtual assistants if they find a deal you should obviously buy it once you've analyzed it and you should review that deal after say two weeks after four weeks 
and then maybe after eight weeks, something like that, maybe 12 weeks, and get them to do it. Go back, get them to say, review those deals on those time periods and see what the sale price, what's happened to the sale price, has that gone up and down? How many sellers are on that listing now as well? Has the seller count gone up or down? Uh, I'm trying to think, well, so you've got price, seller count. Yeah, I think that's probably just enough, I guess, but you can get whatever stats you want. And, you know, and then look how that product's doing. And if that product actually made you, and you, also, you can also track your profitability as well, how much you actually made off that product. So, you know, if it turns out that it didn't tank and it made good money, let's say you made £100 off that one lead, you know, kick them back 5%, kick them back 3%, whatever, you know, and then if it turns out it's a tanker and you make no money on it, then they don't get, you know, they don't get a bonus. So I think that's an important sort of way to do the bonuses and do performance for virtual assistants. Yeah, I, I hate these like metrics of four deals a day or whatever, it's just, it's just rubbish. Absolute rubbish, it means nothing. So, and then going back to that comment, someone said that our VA is cracked up, they ought to be, you know, obviously I touched on a bit before, but yes, they can be good if you train them and then, um, you know, that's way, a good way to leverage your time, you know, leverage your business by hiring someone else, get them to do some of the work for you. But you do need to know how to teach them first. Like what, what category are you gonna teach them? And that's another thing as well. I mean, I've talked about this in other videos. I, talk, I bang on about this all the freaking time. Specialize in a category. That's the way, I mean, that's not the only way you can do business. That's the way I've done it. You know, um, over time, I've begun to specialize in not just one category, I've got a couple, you know, but um, there are people out there that are generalists, like this um, guy called Sati. Uh, many of you may have heard of him. He runs another group called Live Cops. It's another great group, by the way, guys. I just don't promote it. It's a great group, you know. Um, but I'll, I'll throw a link in the description if you want for that group, if you want to join it. It's still a good group. Um, I just can't promote every group. You know, it'd just be, there'd be a long list. Um, that guy makes like £20,000 every single month. Pretty consistently as well. I don't, I mean, he basically hits it almost every month from what I can tell. And he's a pretty much a generalist. He sells anything and everything. So there are multiple ways to do this business. It's just I obviously teach the best way that I think for people. Um, and yeah, if you're going to get a virtual assistant, I think it's really good to get them focused on like a couple of categories only um, and just say to them you need to search these sites these are the sites you're going to be looking on and uh, this is the category you're going to be going for or these two or three categories depending on the time of the year and that's going to be your job basically is just doing those I don't want to get any you know I don't want deals from other things I don't want you searching other deals other sites other categories um, and just say, if you do, then, you know, you're not doing your job. So, you know, um, otherwise the virtual assistant, they're just gonna find you any old crap. They're not gonna learn. They're gonna do the bare minimum. And the other thing as well with virtual assistants, they have no vested interest in your business. Only you are the one that, you know, uh, worries about your business and cares about it. They don't care about it beyond getting their paycheck, which is fine, you know, there's no, nothing wrong with that. You know, just being truthful here. So no one's gonna care for your business as much as you. So do not rely too much on virtual, assist virtual assistants. And if you do hire one, make sure you've got good systems in place. Now this is something I have been lacking. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Um, you know, again, I'm learning as I go. I'm not perfect. But putting good systems in place for everything you do. If you have a specific uh, thing you do, let's say every day you go onto a specific website and check a certain brand of products for price changes or discounts or whatever you know make that a system you know so that it can be passed on to someone else and then maybe a virtual assistant can do it they need to understand they need to go to this website every day or every week they need to look for this specific brand look for a certain price if a certain price is found they need to buy x amount using what credit card whatever you know put the whole system in place your entire step-by-step -step process and this works for everything when you're your admin you know what happens with, with, with admin? Let's, get, let's come up with a system right now for something. You know, you make an order, maybe two days later or one day after delivery, you email the company for an invoice, then you've got chasing, and then once you get the invoice, you then send that to your accountant. Um, and then, you know, that's another thing, a very small system, but anyway. Um, 
And I think that's the best way to teach the any kind of virtual assistant or anyone who's working for you, is to systematize everything if you can. So it's something I'm working on right now, just trying to improve. And this is a good way if you want to extract yourself out of a business. Like right now, I'll admit, you know, well, I've, I've got no virtual assistants working for me right now. New one obviously starting in April. But, um, you know, um, I'm in the business. If I stop working right now, and this is one downside to Amazon, by the way. You know, if I stop working right now, then my, my business will die, you know. If I go on holiday for two weeks, then that's two weeks where new products aren't being sent in, new products aren't being ordered, um, and the business essentially pauses for two weeks. Now, my business might be fine for two weeks. You know, I've got stock in there and things like that, but in Amazon, but it's not obviously not being replenished. So, you know, it's an interesting thing with Amazon. It's a, well, it's a, well, it's a real business. A lot of times it's a lifestyle business, I call it, or a business like a one-man show. And if you want to get to the point where you can, let's say, you know, take yourself out of the business and it can still run successfully, you need to come up with systems in place, you need to come up with good people in place um, so that it can run kind of by itself. And, you know, this is what every company does. They try and, you know, hire employees, get to the point where they can, you know, Ideally, you want the CEO to be able to sort of leave the company, you know, and go away for three months without too much detriment to the company and it can still run itself. You know, things can still get done. Um, stock still gets bought, research, sent in, pricing, repricing still happens, returns still happen, all this kind of stuff, basically. So, yeah, systems, basically, is the best way to go and just keep evaluating those systems um, is really important. So that's something I am learning right now. I am trying to do, trying to systematize everything. I mean, it's obvious, but you know, it's just, yeah. Sometimes you just get caught up with buying and trying to make huge profits. So, you know, now I'm looking back more at, so one of my goals is to, you know, be able to go and live abroad nine months of the year. So only come back to the UK probably for Christmas to see my family and then probably in summer when the weather's nice but then spend nine months of the year roughly uh, in different countries so three months Australia probably three months ideally skiing if I get myself back in shape and um, yeah sit three months maybe in like Miami or Thailand or wherever really I decide to go wherever I want and if you want to do this which is what I want to do you know I can't be accepting stock myself and packing it anymore I need to do a prep center. I can't really be ordering everything myself. I need to figure out a good system to allow someone that is trustworthy to order the stuff for me. Um, same for sourcing as well and understanding the categories that I'm in and finding new products and replenishing new products. Again, replanning, you know, another system you need to put in place. So, let's see if I get quite a part of the road. Eh, not really. Um, police car there, hopefully they're not clocking me at 80. There we go. Slow down a bit. So, yeah, um, you know, you, this is something I'm working on now so that I can extract myself from the business a little bit and not have to worry too much about, um, you know, a business, my business like crashing and burning if I decide to, or if I get sick, for example, or, you know, if I decide to go on holiday for, you know, nine months of the year, I can still do that and still make money. So that is something I think is important. The only caveat to that is obviously you have to hire people <laughs> for the most part, and you might not actually like having employees. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. Well, you know, in the past I had two virtual assistants. Well, technically I had three actually. I had an admin one, I had two sourcing VAs. And I'll be honest, I didn't actually enjoy massively having those employees. To me, it felt like work too much. It felt like I was turning my business into a job where I had to get up every day at a certain time and, you know, do that, do a lot of work. I just, to me, it just didn't feel like, I don't know how to describe it, really. I didn't enjoy it, and that's why I ended up sort of letting those guys go. Um, I, I do regret it a little bit because I was starting to build those good systems in place. But, yeah, I just... just realized that if I do want to grow, do want to ex you know, exercise myself in the business, I just do need to hire people, just train them really well and then um, let them get on with their, what they're doing. So maybe not being so hands-on, maybe that's where I was failing a little bit, I was just trying to teach them as best as I could. 
Um, but then I'll need to become a bit more hands off, if that makes sense. Um, I only do once a week meetings or whatever like that, you know, with them. So, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it became a bit of a chore, I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I think I've learned some lessons from that and I'm going to be hopefully trying to build up my business again in terms of employees. So, and uh, yeah, the, another reason I didn't like having employees and, you know, all these kind of expenses that I had was just because when you have a bad month, you end up paying everyone else and making no money in the business. And that was a bit depressing for me at times. You know, I had a couple of bad months where that happened and, you know, I was just like, I'm paying everyone else money and I'm only making a thousand a month, not enough to pay the bills. Anyway, rambled on enough about that anyway, but yeah, those are my thoughts on virtual assistants and maybe expanding your business, something I'm still trying to figure out. You know, I do the sort of 9, 10K every month. Obviously, I want to try and grow to 20,000, as I mentioned before. Ultimate goal, 20,000 from, um, from, uh, from Amazon every month. 20,000 from YouTube. 20,000 from software. And then who are, what else am I going to do? So, um, my GoPro has just turned off from overheating apparently, I don't know why, very weird. Um, yeah guys, so hopefully that was an interesting video for you guys, probably call it a day there I think, unless I can think of something else. But yeah, um, if you want to learn how to do Amazon, like I said before, come and join my Discord, I'm trying to build up a really nice community, a non-toxic community of people that are going to help each other, that is the most important thing I'm doing here trying to build up a really good community hopefully we're going to get a lot of people in there right now we've got about 70 80 members so you know if you want to come in and ask me a question now is a good time to do it while you've got more you know there's less people asking me stuff obviously once the community grows more you know and i get bombarded with questions and things like that i'm not going to be able to answer all of them so um you know but hopefully people will start helping each other more that's kind of what i'm trying to build up basically i want to build up a really nice community of people that help each other uh, because Amazon's a very secretive community. People do not want to share stuff whatsoever. And I, I think that's a shame, to be honest. And I get why they don't want to do it. Everyone's very secretive about their business and things like that. And there's certain things you don't want to share, which is fine. You know, there's certain things I don't want to share. Um, but, you know, um, there's still a lot you can share and you can help people. And I think if you help people, then you also get something back as well. So for me, I get the enjoyment of doing it all. You know, and maybe someone will help me in the future, share a lead with me, whatever. You know, that's not why I do it. But, you know, if you give, you get back. People help you. If you help people, they'll help you and they'll pass it on to others. So, you know, that's uh, why, I'm, why I'm doing it, basically. Um, but, yeah, come and join that, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you want to join any of those groups that I've mentioned during this, uh, this vlog, say so check out all the links in the description. I've got all the links there. They are affiliate links, full disclosure. So, you know, um, if you run a free Discord group and do a free YouTube channel, you know, it's nice to get some money back, um, you know, just to help, help me do this, you know, equipment's expensive, running a Discord obviously costs money and time and, you know, money, all these kind of things. So anytime you do subscribe to any of these things, if you can use my link, it'd be great. It doesn't cost you any more money. Sometimes you even save money, the, whatever coupon code I've got, and it just it kicks a little bit back to the channel. Yeah, guys, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.